Level 15, 9 0, oh! two absolutely blows a prey. Holy crap! He's going to stay off the queue. Octopus spin. He's been third boxed as well. Elvis Knox, take three for nothing. Two and one in the group. What beast from the CIS region. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Worlds Tonight. I'm Avery Shock Supporter, joined by Max Atlas Anderson and Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. We're going to look back at the fourth day of the World's Group stage, which wrapped up just a little while ago, and nothing interesting happened, right? It wasn't crazy at all. It <laughs> yeah, was crazy. Um, I had this in my pickings, I think, today. <laughs> yeah. It's guaranteed. All yeah. planned. Uh, so, a lot of crazy things happened today, and uh, after watching HQ pick up their second win of the tournament in game one, EDG, they took down H2K, tying them at the top of Group C. This was a very, very important game for H2K. A lot of uh, people were looking at the bottom lane, but it went bad from the start, Max. It yeah. certainly did. Vander, uh, face check there, then he flashes away, so he has no summoners, stays in lane, and just waits there as Def walks up to him. Definitely not the start that you would like. It most certainly wasn't, but of course, you still have question marks for EDG. They weren't able to necessarily close it out all too quickly, so still, bit of a question mark on the Chinese powerhouse. Yeah, and I think that H2K will look to that rematch to maybe have a more even matchup where things don't get as tilted at level one, of course, but in the end, it's a EDG that walks away with the win here, and H2K only one win on the board still for them. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate for H2K. Did like to see Clear Loves in Italy, though. Definitely a new pick for him. Hadn't seen it too much. Nope. Uh, and things actually got worse for the European delegation here at Worlds, but it was very good for Annex, Albus Knox, Luna from the CIS. Another win for them. Crazy stuff. Oh my god, they are legitimate. A yeah. and X are definitely a legitimate team here, a legitimate threat in that group now. And that's where people start to talk about all the chaos of the day really starting was with this big upset. But again, this is the second time they pulled off that sneak Baron to start off their mid-game snowball. They did it just yesterday and they pulled it off again. Yeah, they most certainly did. And they've made this a strategy. Lose a team fight at 20 minutes, <laughs> then sneak Baron. They've done it twice. That is not a that's not cheese anymore. No, and we do see also the brand there, the Anivia pick, just a one more combo that they, they thought of, and uh, they are just inventive, they are creative, and they're coming up with things that the teams are not prepared for. And the action in Group A didn't stop there. Huhi he also got his first and probably last chance to play Aurelian Sol. He carried CLG over win over the Rock Tigers. Kobe was casting yeah, first. Yeah, you can say that again. I think every Korean team will ban Aurelian Sol for every game from here on out, because this was just the first <laughs> of it. Who he and Aframu combo. They get some early kills over and over again. The Romes as well. It was insane. Who he absolutely destroyed them that game. I'm so glad you said the Romes because he was roaming at level one. <laughs> like it, it started immediately and it didn't stop. No, oh, fantastic there. Yeah, they uh, close it out and of course we we're afraid. Oh, teams have gotten ahead of against the Rock Tigers before, but a 10 and 0 Aurelian Sol seemed to be what you need to close it out, and that's what they did after losing to. Albus Knox Luna yesterday. They won the Rock Tigers today. And the Aurelian Sol, it didn't get banned in SKT versus Flash Wolves, and pretty much the same thing happened. Yeah, here's part two. This is why I think that all of them will be banning the Aurelian Sol from here on out, because Maple and Karsa were the story of this game. Karsa over and over on the Lee Sin, creating plays for the team. Uh, it did take them a little while, but they were also able to make it work in the mid game again. This was the big question for Flash Wolves, right? After they had two successful early games, could they close it out? Took the giant star, but they were able to do it. Yeah, I'm really glad that we saw that one as well, because a gigantic stun is what it took to take down that inhibitor. I mean, this game was still relatively slow from the Flash Wolves. They didn't manage to amass that gigantic gold lead, but it was much more controlled play in the later, later game. They really secured it. Yeah, and third straight win in a row for them internationally versus SKT. And with the first round, Robin, of groups complete, not a single team is left undefeated. It looked like Rox and SKT might keep their uh, sheet clean, but even they dropped a uh, group uh, or a game, rather, and that means that there's now a three-way tie in groups A and D and a two-way tie in B and C. I love ties. I like this. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, coming into today, I was like, oh, 
we're kind of past the early hump of group stage where all the excitement happens and from nope. here on out i'm gonna you know predict the conventional wisdom uh, <laughs> but no skt who is the team where i thought was looking the cleanest actually drop a game as well so nobody is undefeated here everybody takes a, a loss yeah. so it's you that's been jinxing it is it kobe that's uh, been, uh, i need to continue it. thinking that it's all going to calm down so that everything continues to my stay master mental. plan to throw the world into chaos hey let's hope it stays that way because this has been super interesting so far and the 2016 world championships continue next week with one group playing their final six matches each day <laughs> that means by week's end just eight teams will Damn. remain to advance to the knockout stage, as we see there. Group A will be up first on Thursday, and each team will play three times to close out that run here in San Francisco. Is the PTSD kicking in, Kobe, when you see that schedule? <laughs> Week two is a very, very nervous time for NA fans, as last year, it did not go so well. So yes, a little bit worried. Uh, about week two, but honestly, uh, we've seen so much, you know, variance in all of the teams play. It's very difficult to predict for anyone. Yeah, as a European, you know, we can only hope that it gets a bit. <laughs> well, we we are going to look forward to next week a little more. So if you're watching in client, hit up YouTube.com/slash Esports for the full-length version of Worlds tonight. But for us here, we're going to go back to the start of the day and dial in on EDG's win over H2K. We mentioned it previously already. It all began with that face check at level one. Forgiven and Vander versus Deft. They wanted to have a good performance, and then this happens. Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate, but of course, you need an excuse for these games. And <laughs> I have a feeling that it probably would have gone a similar way anyway, because EDG are an incredibly strong team. We did see them lose to INTZ, but this is not what we're led to expect. They brought in Pawn to be a stable member of their roster because he's had international experience before. Mouse hasn't. He was noticeably nervous in his first game. Yeah. I was actually, yeah, not sold on them putting Scout in this game until I saw his play. He immediately roamed up top. He helped out Mouse, who was definitely the biggest liability for the team. And honestly, Def continues to be Def. That's the one guy from this team that is really putting in work. Yeah, Def and Mako doing work in that bottom lane. And I said Mouse again for that Aurelia. That's also mentally good, I think, because he didn't have a good performance on it the first time. Now he did, so that will propel him forward, uh, forward rather as well. And turning to the third game of the day, it was Albus Knox Luna. Up against G2. G2, they had to win, but before I talk about them not winning, I want to talk about Albus Knox Luna and just giving them props. Uh, I, you know, we can't talk in upsets anymore because they are the second strongest team in this group. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, they left up Brand. Sweet, we get to see yeah. uh, Lakrit's Brand again. And then Kira also locks in Anivia. They go mid early. He gets the kill onto Perks. Bottom lane, they trade as well. People start to get hyped up again. I mean, this team, they it's a very good composition. They are able to play it out in the mid and late game as well. They are known in the CIS region as the macro team. So when they get the early lead, they've been able to finish it out twice. And the 2-1 record is outstanding for them. Yeah, and Likert did 300 <laughs> less damage than his mid laner and Aww. second highest damage on his team. Like, that is out of control. Oh, Kira was saying, yeah, I'm sure I did more damage, just 300. So, you know, he still did more damage, yeah, so he's not damage. wrong. Super impressive. I oh, slightly God. better than fire for that game, yeah. but that's it. For that one, let's not bring <laughs> up All-Star again. I just, I just love their strategies and what they were putting in place. It yeah. seemed like all of the weird stuff that was going on was a plan. And I don't understand. Losing a team fight, then taking a Baron, and w winning off that, like, it's, it's like, this is my plan. I'm going to go in. We're going to lose here. We're going to have Soul Vision on the Baron. Take that one down. We've got the Poppy against the Lee Sin. He's going to be irrelevant in the late game, but we'll let him think that he's doing things in the early game. It's like all, the whole game was a Max mind game. There, it there was are, beautiful. There are two parts for it as well. Both CLG and G2 in those situations, uh, lack of vision coverage around that area. So good on Albus Knox, who are, you know, the macro team of CIS, to recognize these opportunities and punish uh, both of these teams, but also like a lot of the teams so far here in the group stage at Worlds have been making a lot of mistakes. Yeah, the macro team of CIS, the macro team of Group A. Um, let's talk a little <laughs> yeah. bit about the state of Europe. One win after the first week of group stage is probably the worst that there's ever been, you know, not counting the, the I'm year I'm sure you're going to go back and give uh, all the teams an earful. Shox is, <laughs> Shox is a very uh, strong fan uh, supporting her team I, I very heavily. I am completely unbiased. <laughs> I just always hope that my region does well. I think that is normal. But
But we should highlight it. It is a very bad record, and we yeah. have to see if they will be able to turn it around. And the biggest surprise has been in the late game for these teams, I, especially the opening losses uh, for both H2K and G2. Yeah. They, they, whether it's nerves or whether they didn't have good plans coming into the game, they have failed to execute. You know, as we get through the mid game to the end game, and it looks like they really do need one of those in game leaders to carry that baton past the champion select, past the opening stages. Yeah, and I just want to add that it's not necessarily like they're looking like they can't compete here or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's just haven't been able to find it at the very end. And I have a feeling that week two should turn things around for Europe. They will get more than one win week I, two. I, I mean, I'm happy to stand by that. I comments. I'm not getting paid. <laughs> in fact, game one, they're against Rocks, And if yeah. things continue the way they are, then that should hey, be a win, right? They almost beat Rock Tigers the first time. And I was... Yeah. That was their best game. Yeah, That's the yeah. game that G2 looked the best was against Rocks, actually. So let's talk about Rocks then. The early game. What's up there? Today we saw, obviously, they got behind versus uh, CLG as well, and they did manage to close it out. But is this a worrying trend for them? Uh, I have to say that during this World's group stage, the pick ban phase has been incredibly important. And it seemed like there was a lot of disrespect there because... It's very easy to scout CLG and know that their Relic Soul is such a big part uh, in a lot of uh, the strategies that they like to bring. They give over Nidalee as well as Aurelian Soul. That combo is just very quick. And CLG are made sure that Rox will probably never give that no. combo over again, but that's such a good snowball that they were able to Kobe, pull off with it. How much was it Aurelian Soul and how much was it Huhi? Honestly, Huhi deserves so much credit. So yeah. much credit. Like, we, we see. Aurelian Soul go unbanned, unpicked for the first half of the day. And everyone's like, oh my god, he's, he's uh, re-enabled, right? Everybody's going to be picking him. It, put, it takes a lot of time, you know, for the mid laners. Not everybody has put the time in on that champion. And who he, the level one roam, you know, I mean, pushing up his lane so early, a lot of these plays were... Just who he, right? You want to you want to separate the champion and the player. Yeah, definitely. He deserves a lot of credit individually. He deserves all the credit, honestly. I, I feel like the champion is strong, yes, but who he just played out of his mind, unbelievable. Yeah, Afro definitely. also. Afro also, and yeah, he's still a bit point. sick, but was making uh, all the plays and all the calls. A fantastic play from them. And when we return next week, we were going to see uh, Group A fight for survival here at Worlds. Rocks G2, CLG, and Albus Knox Luna. Who is making it to the quarterfinals in Chicago? I'm not even going to ask Kobe because I don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, honestly, you don't have to ask me because uh, <laughs> this is so hard to predict oh. right now uh, as far as the groups. You go first. I'll ruminate on uh, what I am what I saw here today. In group A, it's, it's Albus Knox CLG. I'm saying it right <laughs> now. I'm ready. I'm so ready. You haven't learned your lesson with Pickums the first time. You're just going to... My Pickums are coming true. <laughs> <laughs> I picked all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, I won't go quite as far. I'm still going to say that rocks are going to get out. Um, yep. And I think that they will correct the pick band mistakes. Um, I don't know. They have been looking pretty shaky, but I'll still go rocks. I'm actually uh, going to switch up my pick them. I had G2 getting out, but with G2's opening here, going 0 3 in the first week, I've lost all confidence but in with them. But with NA's history and, oh, in the look, second uh, week. Is that's, that's definitely a good point. In between uh, some regional feud right now, I think. <laughs> I'm going to have to say CLG for the second one. Um, just because in the two games that they did win, they looked very, very crisp. Uh, the loss to ANX, though, does worry me and yep. does show that, you know, there is variance in their play. And that very well could service in week two, which has happened before. Yeah, definitely. And there is also a chance that Albus Knox will continue to smash it with uh, their interesting team composition. So we'll I see believe. what happens. I most certainly do. Well, that's it. That's all for week one of the 2016 World Championship group stage. Thank you for joining us for Worlds tonight. And we'll catch you next Thursday as the fight for the Summoner's Cup continues. Bye. Here's your test, Papa. Oh. Very tanky. Level 15, 9 0, oh. 2 absolutely blows up Bray. Holy crap. He's going to stay off the queue. Oh, to put